Hello, good evening. Welcome to the third week of spooky season. Well, of my spooky streams. Um, sorry that it's kind of came in a little bit abrupt. <laughs> but um, let's do this again. So hello, how are you? Welcome to the third week of spooky season. And boy, do I have a lovely, lovely treat for you all today. Oh boy. I wanted to play a game for you that catered to my very weird fantasy. I know we're, we're not during Valentine's season, and I know that we things can be kind of lonely when everybody's watching spooky movies together and having somebody that they want to do, like, you know, Halloween parties with and stuff. But fear not, because I have the absolute perfect solution for you. Today we're going to be playing a game that I will preference and say that it is definitely not for children. It is not for children. So if you are a young child watching my streams, even though you're not supposed to be, I am not responsible for what I show you because I do warn people this is an 18 plus place. Um, but that being said, it's also, you know, if you're not really, you know, comfortable with the suggested themes that are going to be shown in this game um i apologize but this might not be the stream for you come at like 7 30 when i'm playing delta room when it's a lot more polite and decent but the game i'm going to be playing for you is called your boyfriend and it's a rando time and of course, I shall be reading everything to you as there's no voice acting, sadly. It's an indie game, but the experience shall stay the same. So, shall we move over? So let's turn that off. Gonna turn on the volume so you can hear the music for this game. Where is it? There it is. It's gonna be really great. So I can't wait to experience it with you. So if you're ready, I'm ready. So let's um let's have fun, shall we? Let's enter our name, of course, best name ever, Nebby. Welcome, Nebby. You two have fun. That's not ominous. My life has been chaotic. My family broke out into another fit of drama, so I left the nest, ran straight to college, and got an apartment and a job. But lately, my job had at a greasy spoon diner has been unbearable my dad doesn't pay the best so that meant i have to find a roommate to afford an apartment and now my roommate is always bringing some dropout into our apartment for late night study sessions my sleep schedule is wrecked and even better the rent on the apartment is late i heard once that if you become a roommate with a friend well if you become a roommate with a friend, you won't stay friends for long. In my case, the friendship gets strained thinner as my friend keeps making excuses why they need to cover their half on the rent. Thanks to that deadbeat, I'm working harder than just to lose money on the rent, I'm nearly broke, and getting a second job feels like it would kill me. At least, in this park, I have some alone time. Peace, quiet. <sighs> looks good. Like, the art looks good. I always love the art to this one. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I've always loved this part of the park. It's untouched by obnoxious family members and college jerks. The only people who come here are the groundskeepers. Even then, they only come by in the morning. Closing my eyes, I rub my face, and half of the tension 
and huff out the tension in my lungs so that I could calm down to enjoy the peace and quiet. Just then, I feel someone sit down beside me. Startled, I turn and look towards the interloper. There's our man! Oh, hey, take it easy. It's just me. I lied there is voice acting. <laughs> the stranger says, trying to keep me from leaping too high off the park bench. You're a jumpy one, aren't you? He smiles and scoots himself closer to me, shyly and awkwardly. I keep my eyes on him, unsure what his intentions are. His unblinking eyes don't stray from mine. Once. Not once. So, are you waiting for a family member or a friend? S Just seems kind of odd for you to be sitting out here, all alone like this and so far away from the jogging track. A chill runs down my spine. I cross my arms over my chest and slide myself away from him and closer to the edge of the bench. I don't know why we're so scared. <laughs> How often does the same person walk up to you out of the blue and start asking such questions? I mean, he's just curious. I mean, he probably saw me just sitting here and thought to check in on me, you know? You know, I, I was alone. Not often, for me at least. He picks up my unease and refrains from sliding any closer. He crosses his fingers in between his legs and smiles warmly. I mean, you don't look like a groundskeeper or one of the old people feeding pigeons after doing Tai Chi. N no, I'm just getting some alone time to myself. Things have been pretty intense lately. He scoots himself even closer, his hands nearly touching mine as he smiles shyly. L look, I know this is sudden, very sudden, but if you're free tonight, can I have the pleasure in taking you out to dinner? Can I have the pleasure? Never mind. He was the real one. I can't tell if he's a bit awkward or just eccentric. Well, what? Why? Why did he have such an interest in me? Well, I'm your boyfriend. Whoa! And, and that's when it got creepy. <laughs> it's... You know... Isn't that why you're here? No, that's not why I'm here. What? My boyfriend? Why would he be assuming we were in a relationship? This is the... There's an awkward silence as the stranger sits patiently waiting for my answer. Um... What? No? What? No? <laughs> I pull my hand away from his. I thought that would... I would... I thought that I would normally try to at least attempt to be polite when I turn down someone's advance, but this stranger's presumptionist makes my skin crawl. He sits there for a moment with a firm stare before pulling his hand away in a relentic retreat. Oh, <laughs> I see. I think I'm getting mixed messages from you. Uh, what mixed messages? You just met me. I mean, it doesn't make, make so much sense for you to come here and then not want me. I stand up from the bench and turn to leave. Hopefully I can get back to the more frequented parts of the park before any other creeps crawl out of the from under the rocks and bushes. Where are you going? He stares back at me from the bench, but I can't read his expression. It's a temptress of mixed emotions and none of them are as positive or playful or playfully awkward as when I first met him. It's kidding late. I'm going to go head home. I lied. I glance over my shoulder to find the nearest path out of the park into the nearest public street. Oh, well, maybe I can walk you home then. No, I mean, thank you. <laughs> Look, it's nothing personal, but you're coming off kind of creepy. I'm not really that comfortable around you. He rubs his arm awkwardly. Creepy, but... But I... L Sorry, I have to go. <laughs> I cut him off and start walking away, occasionally looking over my shoulder. 
I don't want to. I don't want him creeping up on me while back while my back was turned. He never moves. He just sits there with a forlorn look on his face and stares quietly at the ground. Well, so we met someone. How are we feeling? I wander around the city a little bit more, visiting places I normally wouldn't visit. The art and the music is so great for this game. Ugh, my paranoia has me looking over my shoulder, wondering if he might still be lurking somewhere behind me. I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking things. But who knows? Some guy who pursues that he's your boyfriend before either of you even know each other's names is probably not the most psychologically healthy, healthiest of people, are they? Yeah, that's creepy enough to warrant him my cold shoulder. Still, the way I left him behind like that makes me feel like maybe I was the jerk. I come across a local florist shop and I remember passing over a few of my on a few of my downtown walks. I've always been meaning to stop in and pick up some flowers from the apartment, but I could never seem to find a time. Well, I have time now, and I can use a diversion, so why not? Nothing like flowers to up the mood, right, Fang Late Game? Walking in, I look around and take in another pleasant aurora of the shop. I wander past the quaint displays of flower arrangements, potted plants, and small gift bags of potpourri. I had a particularly per I had a particular purchase in mind. From a rustic wooden shelf display containing the flowers and various houseplants came a lovely <laughs> red roses. Ooh, thank you for the follow. Welcome. Being mindful that some still had their thorns, I reached out to pick one. I feel a hand brush against mine. I pull my hand away quickly and glance at the person that I didn't see on the other side of the display. Oh, fancy seeing you here. Whoa! Well, uh, if you're a new follower, it's going to take you 10 minutes before you can talk to me. And, um... Just a couple of quick questions, if I, if I may. Um, one, how did you get here? Two, how did you get here? Three, how did you know I was coming here? And four, um, who are you? <laughs> the man from the park beams upon seeing me and gives me a smile before pulling the rose out. Not to alarm anyone, but he's holding the rose with thorns by his bare hand just holding the rose barehanded no protection no gloves just bare thorn to hand i didn't know you shopped here too i, I don't i say startled by his presence the man then gestures to me with a finger over his lips Shh, it's a small shop. There's no need to raise your voice. His comment rubs me the wrong way, but I try to compose myself. D did you follow me here? I whisper harshly, unsure if crossing paths with him again was pure coincidence or if I need to worry about him after all. What? Of course not. He looks at a little hurt by my accusation. I come here almost every day, you know? Uh-oh. Was I really being a dick to him? Mm, are we being a dick? Or is he just creepy? He fumbles around with the roses in hand that he's that still has its thorns that he seems to be totally fine with and his eyes stay shyly focused on the ground. I love flowers. This little shop is the only one nearby so I come here a lot to see what's new. What new banquet bouquets they have made and if they have any on sale I admit that sometimes I get a glimpse of you okay I'll admit that sometimes I get a glimpse of you through the windows of the diner that you work at and lately I've been meaning to walk in to finally say hi 
but, but I lose my nerves and stay out. Y you've been watching me? Are you serious? What kind of creep are you? But it's not like that. He reaches his hands towards up. He reaches his hands out towards my shoulders and attempts to console and calm me down. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Not wanting his greasy, grubby hands anywhere on me, I flinch away in shock and disgust. Don't touch me. I hiss at him and then turn and storm out of the florist shop. I don't look back. Oh, man. Oh, he is bleeding. He gripped it so hard that he is bleeding. It's finally getting dark out. Ugh, I hate walking home at night, and after crossing paths with a crazy stalker, I have a good reason for it. And now, I'm out later than I want to, than I want it, because I was, tr I was trying to take a longer, less traveled path home, just in case that creepy guy knew about my habits. Well, knew more about my habits. Shit, I'll need to find a new place to hang out, and probably a new job. Already stressing me out. I got enough stress to deal with, yo. I stormed into my apartment and slammed the door behind me before doing another full body shudder. <laughs> I hear the rummaging sounds of my roommate and the study partner in the kitchen come to an abrupt silence after I unceremoniously arrive home. I race by the I race by to my bedroom. They have a habit of walking around naked after their study sessions. And I don't even want to see if they're dressed this time. Ew. I don't want to see my roommate bug naked. In my room, I flop down on my bed and muffle a frustrated scream into my pillow. After a moment, I roll on my back and stare at the ceiling, trying to forget about my day. Trying to forget about him. Before I fall asleep from sheer exhaustion, my last thought was a simple wish. Man, I hope I never see that weirdo again. What's that? What's that in the corner? <laughs> there was something in the window! So that was day one of it. I don't want to exit. I can restart it and I can do a different day. Oh, I think I have to pay for day two because day two implicates something even creepier. <laughs> so I want to see what would happen if we were nicer to him. Let's see what happens if we do it again. Let's see what happens if we did another thing. Why is it big? Hold on. Oh wait, good. It's still the same. Oh, it went bigger. Hold on. Let me fix that. Doo -doo. Done. I want to know why it went bigger. Because now it's like you can't see it. One second, guys. Okay, let's see what happens if we are actually super nice to him. Hi, Seti. And we actually, you know, accept his advance. So let's go play. Oh, it's different. We get back and then just this time we get in the house. Did it go back to that one? That's weird. Cause he's right there. There he is. Right there. Oh, it did start there. Okay. Cool. I was like, why did they do that again? Interesting. 
Okay, that was interesting. I want to see, now I want to see what happens if we actually do it all over and like get him to like what would happen if we did the other situation? Huh. Will it let me do that? Let's see. Oh, I got a tarot card reading. Okay, one second. Just like so loud. <laughs> Whoa! All right. That didn't happen last time. Okay. <laughs> that didn't happen last time. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, I'll read your card after this thing and I'll be right to it. Okay, we did this, did this. I'm going over everything. Thank you for the love, Leela. Him again. Oh, hey, take it easy. You're a jumpy one. So, are you waiting for a family member? Just seems kind of odd for you to be. We're gonna see what happens if we actually go with his advances. Yeah, okay. We'll... Okay, so. Well, I'm your boyfriend, isn't. I'm trying to get to it, I'm sorry. Uh. Yeah, let's go with dinner. Um, I guess we're gonna accept the fact we're gonna have dinner with him. Um, I guess it's not like I'm doing anything anyways, and it would be a nice break for the monotony. Don knows I can't stand to forget my problems for a few hours, and this guy seems interesting enough to keep my mind off things. Really? That sounds great. He beams, taking a hold of my hand into his own. I'll see you tonight at 7. See me where? He's about to stand up from the bench, but pauses abruptly when he realizes that he's forgotten something. Oh, I almost forgot. We need a place to meet up. Sorry. I know I'm so absent-minded, but I'm just so excited. Um, how about the old diner downtown? It's nice and quiet, so no one will disturb us. The diner downtown? Which one? You know, the one that you work at? Oh! <laughs> Okay, great. See you tonight. And just like that, he hurries off with the leaf in every, in every step, looking as though he had just won the lottery. I watch as he disappears down the path and bends around the shadow hill and out of view. The park was quiet again, and the serene loneliness sets it one sets in once more. Just me and a few songbirds singing in the nearby tree. That's it for a while. Be playing the stranger's encounter in my head a few times. I suppose that I should be flattered that he took such an interest in me. I can't tell if he's meeting someone like that is if meeting someone is normal. If meeting someone like that is normal, or it's not uh, <laughs> it's not like I've seen in the movies or television. But then again, if I were a Hollywood attractive if I were Hollywood attractive, maybe it would be so normal that it would be almost annoying? I feel my cheeks flush and I think about him saying, can I have the pleasure? Not me getting shy over this. A shy sw smile creeps from the corners of my mouth. He must have been new to this that I am what a shy, awkward guy. The birds stop singing as I feel a knot grow in the pit of my stomach. How did he know where I work? Yeah, it's different now because you actually get to go to the job now. Ooh, nice. I show up at the diner feeling rather unusual about meeting someone at the place that I worked at 
for a completely spontaneous dinner date. And with a complete stranger who knew that I worked here. Weird. I take a seat at the booth towards the back. The diner isn't very busy tonight, which is less unusual than most people would assume. Even though I work there, or even though I work here, this isn't where I would choose to eat at. Maybe he was another customer that I had never paid attention to. While I work, I let my mind drift, and after a while, I do my job as if I were on autopilot. I don't really pay that much attention to the names and faces, even uh, towards regulars. True oracle? Is it oracled? Oracled? Is it oracled? Yeah, oracled. I definitely know where you're coming from. Trust me. Um, maybe he. Maybe he was one of those regulars building up his courage to ask me out every day, but kept losing his nerve. It's kind of cute though, but do I really want this kind of this to be a thing? I don't know guys, do we want to date him? Do we, do we want him to be potential bae? Taking my seat, I wait. I look at an old fashioned neon light clock that hangs over the jukebox. He is five minutes late. I had might as well buy myself a milkshake while I wait. It's Oracle D3. Got it. <laughs> the waitress on tonight's shift is surprised to see me at the diner on my day off. I imagine that she will tell me job loyalty is one thing, but the food here isn't worth writing about. I don't understand. I would never go back to the, where I work for a date, but you know, maybe it's convenient. <laughs> After serving this stuff for a few months now, I agree with her. But at least the milkshakes are good. They are really old fashioned kind made with real ice cream and ingredients and not the powdered mix and flavored syrups like the fast food places. The waitress must have been feeling less busy than I presumed because she brought my shake to me only a few minutes later. I pulled the spoon from the adventurous looking ice cream glass and licked it clean. So good. I stare at the shake a little before I take a sip. A man rushes in through the diner front doors. He looks like he ran the whole way here with something tucked under carefully in his arm. I immediately recognize his sleeveless hoodie and a blue shirt. Uh, now you forget the delicious- No, I would never eat at where I work at. Just, just no. After I see it, it's not good for me. He quickly scanned the diner in a bit of a panic. He was running late and probably thought that I that I may left had that I may have already left. I was one of the few people in the diner, but still didn't seem to. He still didn't seem. Ah, what is with it today? I cannot read today. Don't think I didn't forget you, Duke. I got you. Um, I was one of the few people in the diner, but he still didn't seem to see me very quickly. I wave him over, a smile of relief spread across his face. Still winded, he hurries down the rows of booths and sit across from me. You know, it looks empty for the, all sakes of purposes of the drawing, but apparently we'll just imagine that it's crowded in here and we'll leave it at that. Oh look, he looks so like thrilled by this box. You're late. I, I know. I'm so sorry, I had to make a quick stop. He speaks between breaths. I didn't know where he came from, but it, he must have ran the whole way back, the whole way when he realized that he was running late. Giving a timid smile, he pulls out a long white box that he was carrying. He places it on the table and slides it over to me. Here, I brought this for you. Thinking about earlier today in the park, it might have been a little creepy to ask you out on a day in the spot. I thought I might get you a little something as a way of apologizing. See, he's apologizing. <laughs> Look at him apologizing. If it was awkward for you, of course. He got something from me? Really? It had better not be a severe, a severed ear or fingers or something. Opening box, I look inside and I see two long stem roses with deep red petals. The thorns were removed and they were bound, they were bound by a shimmery black silk ribbon. Oh, they're lovely. Thank you. That's nice. I got flowers. Normally, I don't like roses. Roses are not the flower of choice, but, you know, I'll appreciate the, the effort. 
He smiles and I take the roses out of the box gently. And if the thorns were still on the stems, I draw them warm in as if the thorns were still on the stems. I draw in I draw their aroma in deeply. They were so wonderfully fresh and fragrant. It's no bouquet or anything, but I thought they looked nice. He watches me admire his gift. They're very nice, thank you. I place the roses gently back in their box. He can't possibly grin any wider. He realizes that he's not staring at me. Maybe just a little too long for comfort, so he averts his eyes shyly. And there is a few nagging questions that have been hanging over me like a storm cloud. They're like, um, oh, by the way, you can get other episodes through their Patreon. I don't have a Patreon, so I don't know if I could do that. Like, I don't have a Patreon account, so I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> Is that possible? And while he was in a good mood, I figured that I could inquire a little about this cute but bizarre stranger. See, we think he's cute. Don't know why we think he's cute, but we think he's cute. Dinner is in a greasy spoon diner with a stranger carrying a box of roses. Didn't seem ordinary, and I had to make sure that he wasn't going to propose at the cash register. I'm pretty sure he wants to. <laughs> I stared the milkshake with the straw for a second or two. So, how did you know that I work here? Oh, well, I work by this place often on my walks. I, I catch glimpses of you through the window from time to time when you were working. I tried coming in, but <laughs> I hit cold feet and just kept walking like a loser. Aww. He glares down at the table shamefully. I reach over and give his hand a reassuring pat. No, you're not a loser. Do you know what? I don't even know your name. <laughs> My name? His smile and his face fades into a, a slight grimace before he gazes just as off to the side. I really don't like my name. Honestly, I'd rather be called something else. Like a nickname or something. Oof. He must have a horrible name or really horrible parents that he wants to dislocate, dissociate with. Okay, how about... Okay, what do we want to name him? Okay, the first name I see is the first name we'll name him. First name. Doesn't matter what it is. What do we want to name him? <laughs> he sounds like every anime protagonist ever. <laughs> what do we name him? Come on, come on, come on. Give me a name. Goku, first name. We're going to name him Goku. Got it. <laughs> okay. What about, how about Goku? <laughs> he seemed pleased with what I came with, despite how silly or tacky it might have been. Yeah, that's much better, honestly. Thank you. I reassure him and give him another gentle squeeze. The expression of disgust instantly evaporates into delight over the name I gave him. Wow, I didn't realize it until now. But he has some beautiful blue eyes. The vivid cover left me taking in their deep blue hue, and I didn't realize that I was starting. I was staring until he spoke up. Are we having a moment or what? A blush spreads across my his cheeks as he squeezes my hand back. See, this is going nice. This is going well. Just a little creepy. It came off a little creepy, but we're doing good. S sorry. I pull my hand from his, cruising myself. Well, cursing myself for staring like that. Wow. Now I'm the awkward one. I look away shyly. I can feel the heat radiating from my cheeks, and I imagine them glowing bright red like a Christmas light. The thought makes me my cheeks warmer and probably even more red. He chuckles and shakes his head. Hey, <laughs> there's nothing to be sorry for. He reassures me with a soft smile. He looks around for something to break the attention, and his eyes fall upon my, my milkshake. <laughs> I was supposed to buy you something. Well, you kind of already did. 
I point to the box of roses. Besides, uh, we could share this, just as long as I get cherry. Deal? I scoot the milkshake towards him. He looks out to the side, reaches over to take it. Man, our first date and you're the one buying. I'm very terrible at this. Well, how about you buy next time? His eyes grow wide and he stares at me with surprise. Next time? You want to meet up again? I always get surprised whenever I hear a voice, and I'm not ready for it. <laughs> well, that wasn't a total disaster, right? So yeah. Well, this this wasn't a total disaster. His face glows as red as I imagine mine had, and he stampers wildly. All of his thoughts unexpectedly evaporate in an explosion of joy. Um, I don't know if you know this, Oracle, but part of uh, the rules here is that you don't do spoilers, even if it's just giving me, like, information. i rather not know. i rather find out on my, by myself. I mean, I guess it wasn't. No harm, no foul. It's just I'd rather just go into things blindly and find out myself. Um, uh, I mean, I guess it wasn't. I mean, I don't think so, but I don't want to argue with you. It was cute seeing him struggle for a coherent thought, while also trying to contain his happiness. His happiness of being with me, of all people. Still, as much as I was enjoying his company, and regardless of how flattering it has been, I couldn't stay long. I look out the window in a bit of an exaggerated way in order to get his attention. It's getting dark. I don't like walking home late. How about we continue this on our next day? Standing up from my seat, I pull from pull up one of the napkins from the demonstrate uh, the, the napkin holder because I forgot how to say that word. <laughs> do you have a pen? Oh, I think I do. He pulls one from his pocket and hands it to me. I write down my name and my number and smiling, passing the pen and napkin back to him. Here, call me when you want to hang out again soon, okay? Taking the pen and napkin from his hand, well, from my hand, he glances down at the number in complete awe before looking back up at me. Of course, I'd love to see you again. See, it didn't go that bad. Totally not that bad. I walk to the register, pay for the shake, and with another quick look back at him, I wave and leave the diner. I walk more quickly to try to make it back to the apartment before nightmare, nightfall. Well, not nightmare. It gets colder outside, but for the same, for some reason, I feel warmth. The whole walk back. See, guys, we're just thinking the wrong things about him. I think I'm judging him too quickly, except for the scream in the beginning of the scene. Ah, oh, once I'm finally back in my apartment, I quietly walk to my room so that I don't disturb my roommate. Judging by the thumping and moaning sounds from the other side of the wall, they seem to be having another study session. Fuck. I wish they would be more quiet. I have to live here too. I want to turn on the light in my room and flop heavily on my bed, face first, into the mattress, limbs spread wide. Letting out a long groan that made a couple made the couple next door pause for a moment, I eventually roll onto my back and stare up at the ceiling. Despite having so many other things in my mind, my thoughts never stray far from Goku. Looking over the box that's still in my mind, still in my hand, I opened it one more time and I pull out the blundered roses and smiling a little, draw in their sweet fragrance again. I hope he calls soon. Go far, go decent. Oh, he's still in the window. <laughs> and that's the episode of the, of the one. That was great. See, it wasn't so bad. It wasn't so bad. He's still a little creepy. Still a little nauseous. Um, if I can find a way to get the other episodes, um, I will go get the other episodes, but I think we had a lovely experience. It was cute.
Bye, Goku. That was great. I think that was cute. Um, it's a short one. If I find other episodes there, uh, I will purchase them and play them, but I don't have a Patreon account. Um, so that was fun. I, I enjoyed that for the experience that it was. Um, so even that was a short little game. And now we're going to get to the other game that I wanted to play for today. Um, so just give me like a brief moment to read Lane's tarot card and then we can get to the next game. So hold on, we're going to do this and do this. Okay. All right. So for those who don't know how this goes, tarot card draws are usually one card draws and I read to you what I have, what I get. Do keep in mind, I want you to think of your question when you are, when this is happening. So if you don't have a question, I suggest you think of one because I certainly am not going to have one for you. <laughs> so. I hope you were thinking of your question, Lanes. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Shuffling. And the card that I have draft, I have drawn for you is the chariot facing un reverse, so upside down. Which, for that state, um, it would be it would represent lack of control, lack of direction, and aggression. Being at the mercy of two opposing forces containing, well, constantly battling uh, for domination. I have notes by next to me about what each card means if you're wondering what I'm reading. Um, there is a sense that you have lost control here. That you are not at the driver's seat and that you are a passive observer. You must begin to understand what it is in your life that you can and cannot drive and let what you cannot go. So basically, you are not in control right now and for whatever, but within whatever you have issues with and you might want to look into that because you if you're not in control it's either something that could either be a good or bad thing depending on whether you want to be in control or not so yeah um <clears throat> i'm pretty good with tarot cards what's the name of the deck of yours oh sure um one second if i may Mm -hmm. So the one I use currently is the Children of Lieta, which is spelled like this, Children of Lieta. If you look it up online, it's a beautiful deck, it's gorgeous, I love it so much. Uh, as for the next game we're going to play, we're going to play Deltarune, so I'm going to give me a second to set that up and then we'll be all great. So I'll be right back. 